let's make a discord.js documentation command. So for example, I could do forward slash docs, and here I'm gonna enter in client, and it's then going to search the discord.js documentation and return back all of the properties, methods, and events, and even link to the actual documentation for more information. Another example would be docs member, and here it's gonna search for member, but guild member is the correct name, so it's gonna return possible results, and each one of these is going to be a link. And this is actually a lot easier to make than you think, because we are going to use the discord.js-docs-npm package, which will be linked down below. So the very first step is to install that npm package on your project. So I could say npm install, and then discord.js-docs, and this will install the package on your project. Now, I'm assuming you already have a main file that has your bot set up. If so, go ahead and use the YouTube player to skip to the next section. But if not, this is how I set up mine. First of all, I am importing everything here, and I have different imports depending on if you're using TypeScript or JavaScript. I'm using TypeScript in this tutorial, so I'm importing things like this. But if you're using JavaScript, you want to import things like this. Afterwards, I'm simply creating my own client, and then whenever the bot is actually ready, I'm going to initialize the Warnoff Keys commands command handler. But you don't need to use this command handler if you don't want to. If you're familiar with a different command handler, then go ahead and use that one instead. But if you are using one of keys commands, it is important to note that I'm specifying a test servers array here. This is the guild ID, which we just used to test the actual functionality at the start of the video. If we don't provide a test servers array, then our slash commands we've registered globally, which might take up to an hour to actually be usable. But specifying a test server here will create guild based slash commands, which are registered instantly. I'm now going to create a docs.ts file within my commands directory. And of course, for your index and your docs file, if you're using JavaScript, you would use the .js extension instead. But I'm using TypeScript, so I have .ts. Now, if you're using JavaScript, the only thing you have to do is import the actual package that we just installed. But if you're using TypeScript, you have to do that as well as import I command from one of keys commands. Now, one of keys commands is going to work by exporting objects within your command files. Within JavaScript, that is simply just module.exports equals an empty object. But within TypeScript, that is going to be export default and then an empty object. And we're going to specify that this will be an I command object. That way we have autocomplete when we're actually working with our project. Now, before we actually export our command, we're going to create a couple constant variables up here. For example, the branch that we want to access from the documentation will be stable. And the maximum amount of characters we can have within an embed is going to be 1024. And we're going to use these things later on in the video. I'm then going to create a function which is going to replace a certain string within this documentation package with the proper string that I'm looking for. So I'm not sure why this package has this docs forward slash docs forward slash disco URL, but I'm looking for a slightly different URL. And this also gives us a chance to pass in our branch right here. And we also see now, this is one of the two places where we're going to use regex, and that might be annoying to type out, so you can find a link to the regex in the description down below. Now, after we have these pieces of information right here, we can finally start working on our actual command. The first step is to pass in our category and our description. This will tell one of keys commands some more information about the command. Next, we're going to specify slash as both and test only as true. This will create a legacy command and a slash command. So a legacy command is like exclamation point docs or question mark docs where there's a prefix in the chat and a slash command is a built-in command into discord one of keys commands has the ability to create both so we can specify both here when it comes to the slash property now test only as true is going to make sure that we can actually use the test server right here if we do not specify both a test servers array as well as test only as true then this is going to create a global slash command meaning it might take up to an hour to actually register. But with both of these properties in place, we can have instantly registered slash commands for this guild specifically. Next, we're gonna specify how many arguments we want and what type of arguments we're gonna have. This will be used for both the legacy command and the slash command to force the user to use the correct type of arguments. Then I'm gonna create a callback function, which will be asynchronous. And this function will be ran every time someone actually runs this command within a Discord server. Now, there are a number of things passed into this function, but we're only interested in the text property, so we can destructure that here. And the text property is going to have all the arguments appended into one single string. So in this case, basically their entire search query, including spaces and everything, will be in this single string right here. Next, we're going to create a doc object from the documentation package. And here we're passing in the branch, which is important. And then afterwards, we're going to get the results of an actual search. 
So here we're calling resolve embed, and this will return a JSON object for an actual embed. And of course, we're passing in the text that the user entered so we can search what they want. Now, in some cases, the user might be searching something where there is no documentation, so we can check for that and simply just return saying that they cannot find that documentation. And then here, I'm going to create a string, which is going to be a string version of the JSON object. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to call the replace disco function, which we created up here, basically making sure all the links are correct and removing any of the extra disco stuff here. Then after we have the proper string that is cleaned up, we could convert that back into a JSON object by using json.parse. This will make it so we can actually pass this as a response and we will see a real embed within the actual Discord server. Now here, I'm simply just gonna override the author URL to basically just send them to the welcome page for the documentation. And then here's the last example of some regex, which you can find in the description so you can easily copy and paste it because writing this out from a video does not sound like fun. Basically, this extra object is going to be used whenever there is too much information. For example, if I go back to Discord and I run docs client, we now see view more here and the link to the actual documentation because there were too many events. We only have a certain amount of space within embeds. So we're going to check to see if that space is reached. And if so, we are going to link to the official documentation where they can see everything. So again, this snippet of code here, as well as the regex mentioned before, can be found in the video description so you can easily copy and paste it. Now afterwards, we're going to loop through every single field and to make sure this is not going to throw any errors, we're going to have a fallback value here of an empty array. Now the reason for this for loop is to make sure that every field does not exceed the maximum value of 1024 characters. So what we're gonna do here is if the field value length is greater than or equal to the max value, which is 1024, we then want to remove any extra properties that are found on that field. So the very first thing we're gonna do is simply just assign the field value equal to the first 1024 characters of the field, basically just removing anything extra. Now, if we just leave it with the previous line, then we might have some extra characters and some half words on the end. We don't wanna do that, so we need to make sure we clean up everything in a very clean manner. So we're going to then take the new value and split that by a space, basically taking every single word, or more technically, every single event, and then having that be in its own array. So for example, webhook update will be its own element, warn will be its own element, role update will be its own element, and so on. Now next, we're gonna create our own joined variable using let, because I plan on changing this, and we're going to assign this equal to split.join with a space, which might seem confusing because we just split it. What's the point of doing this? But it'll all make sense once we have the rest of the code done. Now we're gonna have a while loop, basically saying while this joined length is greater than the maximum value minus extra length. So what is extra length? Well, here we have the view more with a link. And so this is going to make sure that we always have enough space for every single property, as well as this extra link right here that will link to the rest of the documentation. So now in this while loop, we need to keep on removing different events from the actual embed until we have enough room for everything. To do that, we can simply just say split.pop to remove that and then assign joined equal to split.join again. And this is why we have this initial value right here just to make sure everything is consistent when it comes to this joined variable. So essentially, we're going to keep on removing the certain events that we see right here until we have enough room to store view more here with this link. So without this code here, we would actually see more events within the documentation command. But again, we are going to be missing some of them. So we want to remove everything we need in order to fit this code right here. Now, after the while loop, we're gonna say field that value equals joined plus extra, basically having all of the events here and then adding on the extra string, which links to the documentation. Now, after the for loop, we're wanting to remove one of the fields if it actually links to the documentation. I'll explain this here in a moment. First, I'm gonna go ahead and return embed, and then I'm going to explain visually how exactly this is going to work. So if I comment this out and I return my bot, I can now go in here and I can do docs client, and here we see view source, but if I go to open this, it's going to link to docs, blob, disco, source, and this doesn't actually work anymore. So I'm wanting to completely remove the view source here and only have a direct link right here. So with that said, we're first going to make sure that all the fields exist. And if so, we're going to get the very last field here by getting the array and accessing the length of the array minus one, therefore getting the very last field. And we're gonna check its value to see if it starts with view source. If so, we're just going to use pop to remove that from the array. Then after that, all of the editing on the embed is done. So we can simply just return embed here. So if I save this, 
and the bot actually restarts, we're then gonna have a fully working documentation command. So here's all the code that we just worked on. I could say docs message, and here we see a message. I could say docs member, and here we see a search result. I could say docs client, and here we see all the information for the client, which there's too much of, so we have a link to the official documentation right here. Want to improve your Discord bot even further? Click here to check out my other Discord tutorials.